You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. It's just embarrassing. The exes are back, so let's break down season three, episode 12 of Andy Mac and find out just what happened. <laughs> Rise and shine on you lovely people, Lisa here for your next Mac Attack recap. But before I dive into this week's episode titled The X Factor, I recently interviewed Luke Mullen, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, and Lelon Bowden at the Kim Possible premiere a week or so ago. So if you haven't checked out those interviews yet, I'm going to put those links down in the description below. People will be happy, and I'm very happy. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, because I'm always posting fun stuff like that. Now, onto this week's episode titled The X Factor, where the Wish from the Lantern storyline is finally brought back around. The first exes we have to talk about are Miranda and Bowie. Yes, unfortunately, Miranda and Morgan return in this episode, and while at first it seems like they're trying to make it seem like they want to make peace, I never trusted them for a second. There's just something shady about them at all times. These two show up at the record store to talk to Bowie, and Miranda tells Bowie that she's learned a lot from what he told her the last time they saw each other, and that she's a better mom now, and Morgan's also acting better. And basically, she wants to make amends. But with the way she's laying it on real thick, and also Morgan, who keeps saying, and she misses Bowie and that Miranda's new boyfriend is not Bowie. Yeah, it's obvious that they have another agenda. They're just trying to win Bowie back, but he mentions he's engaged now, which kind of shocks Miranda, and she's like, to who? And since Morgan really misses Bowie, they ask if Bowie can give Morgan lessons, and they kind of guilt him into it. Then when Bowie's picking out a guitar for Morgan for a lesson, she disappears, and he spends the rest of the day in an utter panic trying to find her running around the store, running around town, and he just can't find her. So when he runs into Miranda and says that he lost Morgan, unfortunately, but he's going to find her, Morgan pops out of the clothing rack. Miranda she should call the police. Boo! <laughs> Did you see his face? I did, Morgan. He was so worried. Yeah, Miranda's like, ha ha ha, this is just a game that Morgan plays. And it's like, really? Really, lady? Yeah, they were just trying to play games to try to win Bowie back. But you know what? Bowie ain't falling for it this time. Why? So you can show up in a few weeks, thank me for my honesty, and tell me how much I helped you? Find someone else to play games with. I'm out. Yeah, Miranda, I think it's time to just move on. Thank God Bowie has a good head on his shoulders and sees that this lady is bad news. Like, what did he ever see in her anyway? Well, unfortunately, though, Bowie isn't the only person Miranda's trying to play mind games with. Yeah, she's also getting into Bex's head. I never saw it coming. For six years, we had a pretty perfect relationship. And then? And then... We got married. And you could just tell she's planting these seeds because she's the spawn of Satan and is totally getting in Bex's head because she's getting some cold feet now. Now while Bowie definitely lets Bex know that he's excited to marry her, that Miranda is out of the way, he doesn't know why he fell for her in the first place, all of this Bex still has that look of uncertainty that maybe things are going to change once she and Bowie get married and her doubts yeah, they're starting to grow. So when she goes to actually hand her wedding invitations to the mailman and he makes a mention about how he loves this part of the job, being able to play a part in you know, the changes of someone's life, yeah, that just freaks Bex out even more and she uh, ends up taking back her wedding invitations and running off. So it looks like people aren't getting that invite anytime soon. So yeah, it looks like there are definitely some speed bumps ahead on our way to the Bexy wedding. But all I gotta say is that wedding better actually happen yeah, right? By the end of this season, fingers crossed. Fun fact though that Disney Channel released on their Twitter, the mailman in this episode is actually paid by Peyton's dad. Alright, so now let's talk about Jonah and the reveal of his lantern wish. So Andy, Buffy, and Cyrus start to notice that Jonah's acting weirder lately. Like he wants to hang out with them, but anytime something costs money, he ends up turning it down until Amber comes to the rescue offering him stuff for free, like a breakfast that was made wrong that someone didn't want, or a free ticket she happens to have for Adrenaline City. Buffy immediately jumps to the conclusion that Jonah and Amber must be back together, but Andy keeps saying it's not that because she's been holding on to the secret and because she knows Jonah's with Libby. Eventually, Andy comes clean and tells Buffy and Cyrus that she thinks Jonah's family is having money problems, and she shows them the wish that fell out of his lantern. I wish my family could be happy again. What's going on with Jonah's family? 
I think they might be having money problems. So yeah, it's something that Andy didn't feel like she could just bring up to Jonah out of the blue when she was waiting for him to talk to her, but we know Jonah's not all about his feelings, so yeah, he never brought it up either, and a lot of time has passed. But she realizes that, you know, Jonah must have confided in Amber since her family went through money problems too, and that's why they're hanging out so much, and why Amber wants to help him. And well, we kind of have Buffy biting her tongue for jumping to conclusions thinking Jonah and Amber were back together least for now. So the trio decide they want to try to help Jonah but on the down low so they go to the record store to ask Bowie if he can give Jonah a job but Bowie says unfortunately he can't since it's such a small business and they're not making a ton of money. Then when Jonah walks out of the back music room Bowie apologizes to Jonah for not being able to hire him and Jonah's famous like lost what are you talking about look takes over his face because he really has no idea what Bowie's talking about. So Jonah finally sits down with Andy, Buffy, and Cyrus, and Andy explains how she found that wish that, you know, he just wanted his family to be happy again, and so he comes clean about what's been going on. He explains that his family had to declare bankruptcy after an investment his dad made the year before went bad, and they ended up losing their house, so they're staying with relatives. And the group tells Jonah that he can trust them, so Jonah says no more secrets among them. But you can tell by the change in his face that he still has a secret. So what's that secret? anyone else feel like their eyes are burning? Yeah, looks like Buffy may have been right to begin with. Jonah and Amber are caught kissing. Now, we still shouldn't maybe jump to full conclusions here. We definitely don't know the full story, but it kind of does not look good, right? Maybe Jonah already broke up with Libby and didn't tell the others? This kiss doesn't seem like it's one of those caught up in the moment type kisses, you know, when you're just like, oh, we're feeling the moment kiss. Wait, what did we just do? That looked like a, like a, we're in a relationship type kiss. And it seems like Jonah kind of knows he's doing something wrong, hence that face change when talking about secrets. Also, the way he said they were stand staying with relatives kind of sounded weird. So is her his family staying with Amber's family, maybe? Or staying somewhere else? There's still some things Jonah's not coming clean about that I guess we're going to have to wait and see unfold. Well, that wraps up the main events of this week's episode of Andy Mac, And I just got to say, I'm so glad we finally resolved that wish cliffhanger. Yeah, I think there's still a few cliffhangers we haven't wrapped up yet, but hopefully those are coming soon. For now though, let's go ahead and take a look at the promo for the next episode. Metcalf just announced costume day. That's too soon. Guys, hello, we know what we're gonna be. Now Rushmore. Well, it's costume day and you know Andy loves her uh, arts and crafts as you saw from the cold open of this episode. So she's extremely excited and wants to force him to go as Mount Rushmore. Yeah, such a weird costume but I kind of expect that from Andy, right? Uh, unfortunately for her though, it seems like someone might be backing out and that might be Cyrus because, um, does anybody else smell couples costume here? What you got going on for costume day? Costume day? You don't strike me as a costume day guy. Do you think Andy will still be my friend if I bail him out Rushmore? For cancer? No. Yeah, I can already call it now. Andy is going to flip if Cyrus backs out of their Mount Rushmore because then they're going to have to find another head to go in there. But all I know is I need to see Cyrus and TJ with matching or complimentary costumes, couple costumes, guys. Uh, yeah. Another storyline we get, we also have Andy finding Bex's wedding invitation. Wait, let me help you. Are these your wedding invitations? All right, so yeah, next episode looks like some fun. It'll probably bring out the dramatic Andy again. And it doesn't hint that we'll figure out what's going on with Jonah and Amber, so I don't know if that'll be resolved in this next episode or we gotta wait a couple more episodes like Andy Mac usually does with spreading this stuff out. But does it really matter, people? Because it seems like we're getting some Tyrus uh, time in the next episode. Tyrus. I mean, it seems like, you know, TJ wants Cyrus to do a costume with him. I'm kind of curious to see what those costumes would be, though. I need to know, right? All right, I need to calm down, and uh, it's time for you guys to hit me up in the comments with your thoughts and uh, theories and whatever about this episode and the episodes coming up. What do you think uh, is really going on with Jonah and Amber, and do you think we're going to get this Bexy wedding or not? Well, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments, and after that, you can check out those two interviews I mentioned right over here with the Annie Matt cast, and don't forget to subscribe. My name's Lisa. As always, thank you for hanging out with me. I'm getting tongue-tied, so it's time for me to get the hell out of here. Peace out.